Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a finished object video for you guys for the sweater that I'm wearing. This is the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta. So if you're interested in hearing some details about my finished sweater here, stay tuned. Me and Makoa just got back from the vet, so he's a little extra clingy, I would say. He checked all out, so that's good. Everybody was so impressed with his teeth and his energy for his age, so that's always a plus. But he's probably going to be sitting right next to me, distracting me a little bit. So if you hear any panting or anything, that's the little dude down there. And yeah, today is Monday. I am on vacation today. I was on vacation on Friday. And then I have to go back tomorrow, but it's okay. I'm off again on Friday, and then the following Monday is a holiday. So I'm just trying to ground myself. The Sunday scaries are like carrying over into Monday, which is no fun. If you guys know, you know. But anyways, I guess we'll go ahead and get into my finished object. I have been monogamously knitting lately, so one project at a time, and I actually decided that I want to do a craft show this year. So after I finished the sweater, I told myself I need to do a little bit of prep for that craft show before I can knit another sweater. So I don't have enough to show you for a full knitting podcast episode, but I wanted to talk about the sweater before it's like months before I film another podcast and I forget everything I want to say. I knit this sweater. It's the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta. I knit it with Ali from Explore Knits and Fibers Linen Colorway and her tweed base yarn for the main yarn. And I helped that double with Sorella's um, Voyager's Mohair. It was from her Moana collection. Yeah, Moana, that's the name. I am not a Disney girly, so <laughs> we struggle with that a little bit. But I've had both of these in stash for a while. I do actually have Surrey Alpaca from Explorer Knits and Fibers in the linen colorway that matches the tweed yarn perfectly. But as I was grabbing the yarn for the sweater, I realized that the Sorella mohair, it was a little touch darker than the linen, which I liked because it gave the sweater a little bit darker of a quality. But I find with Surrey that it kind of looks matted a little bit more than mohair so I didn't want to use it in something that I knew that I'd be wearing a lot because I didn't want the quality of the Surrey to change over time and then me be disappointed with it whereas with mohair I don't feel like it gets that matted look as quickly and that's just my personal opinion so I decided to go for the mohair and I'm saving the Surrey that I have for a different project on the line I don't know what it's going to be yet but if I had gone with the Surrey, I would have had plenty of yarn to not stress about, but I went with the alpaca and I only had two skeins of that yarn. So I was stressed this whole project. So I had four skeins of Allie's tweed linen yarn and I only used two. I used every inch of two. I posted on my Instagram story how much yarn that I had left. And then on the mohair, I actually ran out of mohair while I was doing the bind off. So whenever I went to sew these buttons on, I actually had to use yarn that I used, like yarn that was left over from weaved in ends, I had to use that to sew the buttons on. So I used every inch of this yarn that I possibly could and somehow it came out pretty much to pattern. I do wanna go ahead and just jump into construction. It is a drop shoulder knit from the top down. So you do the back panel first and then you pick up and you do the two front panels. And let me show you the kind of look that that gives you. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but it gives you a little bit of a seam right back here on the shoulder. And then the uh, button band is actually an applied button band. So you knit it while you're knitting the sweater, which is really nice. So these buttons are just buttons I had in my stash. I actually found them when I was looking for other buttons and I couldn't find any at the stores that I like, so we just went with these dark brown buttons. But again, it's knit from the top down, drop shoulder. I followed the pattern to a T except for the sleeves. I picked up quite a bit less stitches for the sleeves than it called for. It had to have been at least 10 less stitches, if not more, but I felt like, so the button or the armhole is pretty long. I knit the second size, I believe possibly the third. I will put it on the screen if I remember, but it has you pick up a lot of stitches for the arms. 
And I knew that A, I don't have long arms and B, I don't have a lot of yarn and I am going to be pushing it here. I did not have the amount of yardage and mohair that the pattern suggested I should have had. I was about 100 yards short. So I was hopeful with shortening the amount of stitches I picked up for the armholes and the arm itself, it would give me enough yarn, which I'm happy I made that decision because it did seem to work out for me. But so yeah, I picked up less stitches and then I did exactly what it said for the decreases. So my sleeve is a little bit shorter, as you can tell. I could totally block it out to be longer, like no problem, but you guys know me, I like shorter sleeves like that. Now I do find the sleeves a little uncomfortable and not in a way where they're like too tight or something like that. It's actually, it kind of feels like there's a lot of fabric up here. So I almost wish I had even less stitches for the buttonholes because it does feel a little awkward for me. Um, I didn't really look at other people's patterns to see how theirs looked as far as the sleeves go. But if I do have them pulled out all the way and don't tuck them up, they seem a little bit more fine. But I do have all of this fabric right here. Let me see if I can't give you, this has quite a bit of positive ease, which I love. It's perfect in that manner. But it's just that part of the sweater is kind of throwing me off. But I think with wear, I'll get used to it and I'll really enjoy it. Because this is hopefully going to be a staple in my wardrobe this year if it ever cools down. Aside from the sleeve modifications, I did everything else to pattern. I knit the body with the four buttonholes. The only thing I did do is I only managed to get eight rounds after this fourth buttonhole instead of 12. So the pattern says do your fourth buttonhole and then follow the pattern for 12 more rows. I did not have enough yarn to do 12. My goal was to have enough yarn to do at least eight and I did manage to get eight rows out of the yarn and do a tubular bind off. So I was very happy with that. I, like I said, I had barely any yarn left at the end of the tubular bind off. So I did not have to break into another skein of the tweed yarn, which was amazing. So I still have two skeins of that left to use in the future, which I kind of am playing with an idea of what I want to make with it because I have some Hello Stella tweed yarn in a green color. And I was thinking of making the Junko Okamoto sweater, the twigs sweater, but we shall see. I'll have to look into that. I don't know if I have enough yarn, but it's on the list. So yeah, the body itself is about four rows shorter than she suggests it be, which is totally fine. It hits me exactly where I want it to. It's got the perfect fit for what I was wanting. I did not gauge or anything. She does call for a DK weight yarn in the pattern, I believe, and it's just a DK weight yarn. And I held a fingering and a lace weight together to give me that DK vibe. But I do feel like I was pretty spot on as far as sizing goes. I feel pretty comfortable knowing what my gauge is with certain needles and how I can get close to what a pattern says. But definitely swatch if you are not comfortable in doing that because repeat on a mohair sweater is not fun. Trust me, I've done it a time or two and you don't want to do that. So obviously this is a cardigan. It does unbutton. I do like it buttoned, so that's why I'm leaving it right now. So you do have all of it knit flat except for the sleeves, so there is a lot of purling, which at this point in time with all the purling I've been doing lately, I actually think I'm enjoying purling a lot more than I enjoy knitting now. And I think I'm a lot faster at it, which is so weird. But I hold my yarn in a manner where I flick it. So whenever I do a knit stitch, I actually move the needles more than I move my yarn or my finger, but I do flick my yarn. And so whenever I go to purl, I actually hold my yarn in the same exact manner as I do whenever I knit. I just pull it to the front and I do the same motions, but with purling. So I don't change up my knits and purls too much. It's relatively similar in motion. So I've gotten really good at purling at this point and I'm kind of digging it. I, I am enjoying it. So I don't think I'm gonna be deterred by cardigan patterns coming up in the future. I do wanna knit more. I think this is my third, this is my third cardigan of the year, which is amazing. I, I can't remember before that really knitting cardigans by choice or even for like samples, I would usually try to avoid a cardigan because of the purling. And honestly, I think I just got in my head with the purling sucks mentality just because I watch a lot of knitting podcasts and people don't tend to like to purl. But as I was sitting there doing it, 
and just like watching TV, I was like, wait, why did I ever not enjoy this before? Uh, it's the same finger situation as knitting. So in my mind, it it's like the same thing. I just hold the yarn to the front instead of the back. So I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about the field day cardigan. It was a really easy pattern to knit. Again, it's pretty size inclusive, I believe. Um, Ozetta's patterns are pretty good on the spectrum of size inclusivity. And I do recommend her patterns. This is my second one this year. I knit the Moonset tee by her as well. And it's very similar in the construction and but you just join in the round instead. So it is a drop shoulder t-shirt, which I love. It's one of my favorites. But I decided to go ahead and do the field day cardigan because whenever I was pulling out yarn for my previous sweater, before that, I originally was like, ooh, I wanna make a cardigan out of that yarn. And then I found that the field day cardigan and I decided that that's the one I wanted to make, but I decided to knit my sheer V sweater beforehand because I had just knit a cardigan before that one. So I wanted to take a little break from cardigans and then I immediately like jumped up, grabbed this yard and started it. So I did finish it in just under a month, which I impressed myself with that because honestly, I finished it last yesterday afternoon and I had thought I had been working on it for like over a month, like a month and a half going on two months. Then I went to my Ravelry page to put my finish date in and I realized I started it less than a month before. So that's really cool. Also, the only good thing about summer knitting is how fast your knits dry. I finished a sweater yesterday morning, late morning. I blocked it. I just put it outside in my chair, which has, um, it's like bamboo type of chairs. So they have like holes in them or splits. It's not like a solid piece of wood or anything. So I always lay them on top of the chair so they get ventilation all around. And that sucker was dry in an hour and a half. It was 92 degrees yesterday and my front porch faces west, I believe. We're gonna go with west. So I get a lot of direct sunlight in the afternoon and she was done. She was like, let's take pictures. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I put on my jeans and my hand knit wool mohair sweater and I took photos as one does in their air conditioned house in the middle of summer. Although I guess technically now it's the end of summer, but I digress. So yeah, that is my field day cardigan. Like I said, I'm probably not going to be casting on another sweater for myself anytime soon. I say that, but I really want to, but I kind of feel motivated to do a craft show this year. Last year I really wanted to do one, but I was feeling a little uncomfortable still with my self and my place and what I was doing and then this year I just feel really inclined to do so. So as I was finishing this sweater and taking photos of it I realized my sweater game has been so luxurious this year. Not that I use the finest wools and the finest cashmere, but to me like the quality of my knits has just gone way up um, from materials to my own skills and I decided that I wanted to do like a luxury lunar knits line which isn't like luxury in the sense of cashmeres and silks but more so in the type of hats or scarves or headbands that I want to produce so smaller knitted things not the chunky yarn more wool in them just stuff that feels higher quality to a customer but I can do it at a finer more minimal price point because in my area it's not the richest area in the world so I do need to be cautious of the things that I'm trying to sell to people here. So I am using stuff that I can find at a big big box store, but I'm making the quality of the knits better. So I'm really excited about that journey. I am only planning on doing one craft show this year, just like a one and done, but it is a two day craft show. So hopefully I get into that one. I used to do it back in the day for a couple of years and I haven't done it since then. So hopefully they still want me to be a part of it and I'll get in and I'll be able to showcase what I've been producing, the level of quality I've been producing lately. And I'm really excited. I did a post on my Facebook page, which is great for my local area. I have a lot of followers on there from my local area. So it went off well, the post I made. So I'm really feeling motivated and thinking I want to just dive in and See what I got, see what I still have. My hands have been hurting a little bit more recently, 
uh, with a lot of the knits that I've been doing. I've been knitting like a sweater a month or so. And on top of that work, I do work on a computer and it is hard on the hands. So I've been pretty cautious of making sure I'm stretching, taking breaks, use a heating pad for my neck and stuff so I can really power through because like I said, the knits I wanna produce, they're gonna take longer to make than if I used a super chunky yarn. I'm using more of a DK sport weight yarn. So it's gonna be a lot of work, but I'm excited to, to, to do this and to show off my skills because that's what it's all about. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say. This was a short video, kind of rambly and pointless, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyways. If you did, leave a comment down below on what sweaters you were working on, if any, and subscribe to my channel for more random content. Give this video a thumbs up if I didn't already say that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!